there are still homeless people in Brampton, sleeping in cars and trucks and under bridges and makeshift shacks. And, and well, home is a box. You make your box where you are. And some people got bigger boxes than others, that's all. Based on your own experience, what does it mean uh, to be homeless or impoverished? You have nothing. You have nothing. Like, you have a heartbeat and that's it. You have no shelter, no food, no family, no nothing. You're just alone. You're very solitude alone. That's what I got out of it. It's not a nice feeling. Everybody's dream is to have a home, to call their own, to grow their family, for stability, for, you know, foundation, tradition. There's many ways of defining home, homeless, because a lot of people have jobs, but they sleep in their car. They'll be sleeping in a building when it's closed at night, you know parking lots, and they use the public washroom for hygiene purposes. Well, I just, I learned of uh, the rec center up in Heart Lake, right? You can go there for like a dollar, and you can use the shower every day for a dollar. Right? I just learned of that. But so, for the last couple of weeks, though, no, I've been asking, I know this one other friend in Brampton, so I go to his house, have a shower, you know what I mean, do some laundry. This truck is a 1999 model, okay. so it's it's almost 20 years old, yeah. right? And uh, as you can see, over time, you know, people have like uh, you know used this truck for many many different mm -hmm. things, right? You know what I mean? I, you know, I I, I kind of need it to get out of the cold and, and sleep for a bit when I get my license back in order, type thing, yeah. which is maybe a w another week or so, right? Okay, I need okay. funds, so yeah. I'm trying to look for. You know, like those temporary jobs, like labor ready stuff like that, where you get cash at the end of the day, right? I have a little bit of a fine to pay. Not a huge amount, but enough that I can't drive again yet, right? Yeah. You know, so when that gets cleared up, you know, my plan is to get back into the, get back working and get off OW, right? But I, like I say, I, look, an intelligent person like myself still fucks up and lands in a truck like this. When you have no money, it's hard to get places like the bus just went up a couple weeks ago to three dollars instead of 275 and it's harsh when you have when you don't even have 275 you know or 250 or whatever it was it's harsh you know so how did you end up in this situation where you you don't have uh, a place being, of your own being uh, out of work you know kind of laid off from work or uh not you know falling behind on rent you know uh as, you know, as you can see, I smoke cigarettes, so maybe sometimes I shouldn't buy that pack of smokes every day for a week and then maybe pay more rent, you're right, you know. I smoke a little weed, you know, so then I tried harder stuff like the cocaine, you know, and I tried, you know, got addicted to that for a little while. Nonetheless, right, bad decisions eventually catch up to you. And, and I guess that's what finally it did, right? How long so. ago have you been living like this well in this particular truck uh maybe maybe a week now i guess okay. but it's been about three weeks three weeks since i've actually been on the street and not wanting to go like uh again back to like let's say a shelter you don't sleep okay. you can't sleep there so much noise, people, children up, running up and down the hallway. You can't sleep there. You have people pounding on your door, on your walls, through the windows, especially if you're on the first floor. I had some chicks smoking crack in the bathroom there. We're about 10, 15 minutes walking distance from the downtown Brampton core, uh, behind a, a strip mall, no more than maybe 100 yards from the parking lot. Um, it's a squat. Um, it's a wooded area, uh, very close to the beer store, very convenient. Um, we've got our mats, our sleeping bags, they're just being hung up to dry right now. Uh, we've got a couple of shopping carts here. These, these are essential. Um, the guys use the uh, shopping carts to carry beer. Um, a lot of them go to the drop-off boxes where the clothes for the United Way and, and different organizations are given and uh, the guys fill up the shopping carts with a few bags of clothes 
They bring them back here and they can sort through the clothes and take what they need. There's a great big uh, stigma placed on anybody who's classified to be anywhere near street people in Brampton. Yeah. Um, along with the mental illness and the addiction that brings people to the street, the stigma is that people want to be high and people want to have to sell their body and people want to be homeless. Yeah. You know, so it's hard to get those people involved to help. The people I find congregating in the downtown core are mostly addicts mostly um, suffering and addiction to some form of substance, alcohol, drugs, or both. It's not to say that some of them don't suffer a mental uh, health issue, but I find that the ones that are downtown here in the core are suffering addictions. North of the city here, up by Mayfield, I have quite a few clients up there. These guys are all working. They're all uh, uh, productive members to society, but unfortunately they seem to suffer mental issues and they almost seem to be cast-offs. So where do you get food? The night's table there. You go there. Yeah, I go to the night's table or I go down maybe sometimes to that church in the mornings, right? Okay. Working at the night table, it really opened my eyes a whole lot to see so many wonderful people that they have to come to a place to get food to survive. When they leave out of there, we don't know what happened next. They said there's no poverty here in Peel, then how come they have all these kitchens? How come they have all these churches that are open? Because there's too many, and sometimes there's not enough to, to feed them all. So there's nothing there. Um, the political side of Brampton said that they don't have no homeless people. They don't even admit to having homeless people. There's a lot of homeless people. And there's a lot, yeah. yeah. Freddie, what's it like to be hungry and not be able to eat, to get food? Painful. It is. It's very painful. Just let me have something, anything. Please, just something. You know, sometimes I feel like going to a dumpster and just looking for scraps. Just, I'm hungry. Why can't I eat? When you're chronically homeless, uh, there's a certain sense of resignation that takes place. And that resignation says, this is my lot in life. This is here I am. <laughs> so, when you resign yourself to that, you give up and you exist. And it's, uh, where's my next meal? Where's my next bed? Who's got my back? Who's keeping six for me? Uh, who do I know? Who do I owe? Uh, who owes me? Uh, who's good? Who's bad? The community is made up of which people? Which people can I trust? Who can I not trust? I have five boys. Three bigger ones are from the age of 26 to 13. And three grandkids. If it was me alone, I could be bouncing at my friends. But I have kids. And that's where the concern is. My daughter was born November 5th, 96, 1996. And the first seven or eight months of her life, I lived in a park with just sleeping bag and pillow. People think they need to do crime so that they, way they can get food and stuff like that. Like I did the same thing myself, but I'm now legally blind, legally deaf. I can no longer smell. I have brain injury and 83 or 84% of my head is now titanium. It's just try to escape, but it's hard sometimes when you escape, but you don't know where you're going to. They assume that, okay, you have what you need, you have what you, you got, but they don't assume that you actually need things to wash your clothes or to eat. They just think, oh, you can make it by yourself. You put yourself in this position, so that's your own fault. Go get a job. What was if you're disabled and you can't get a job and welfare won't help you because you're disabled? What are you supposed to do? I just turned 21 in November. I like my age. I feel much older. I have cops tell me thinking that I'm 35 years old. I'm like, no, I'm only 21. See, this is what's so evil about it, man. This is the way these guys think. You get some young little thing from the shelter. You get her on the pipe. That shit is evil, man. You lick that pipe for a day, you're hooked. No shit, you're done, right? I've seen these guys go and hustle 20 bucks, okay? Go grab a 20 stone, go to the girl, 
break it in half, put it on the pipe, melt it, let her hit it, and then look at her and say, you want the other one? Get out there. Go, go. Make me a hundred bucks. Evil, evil drug. When people say, do a couple of blasts and you're hooked, yes, you're hooked. Period. Just from one silly mistake. I'd say a good 90% of our street girls are infected with either uh, Hep C or HIV. You know. I wish I never left my parents' house. I wish I'd, I wish I would have been a good little girl. But I just thought I'd be, I can be free and nothing would happen. But it doesn't happen that way. I regret it to this day. I wish I'd be at home with my mom and my dad. Hardest to be homeless at three o'clock in the morning when you're on behind some bush or behind some garbage can or behind some shelter or in a stinky room with 70 people. Usually early in early morning, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning when I'm sleeping outside, my hip hurts so bad because the weather's cold. The arthritis is in my body now; it's incredible. But you 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 get so about two o'clock in the morning, it's so cold and the warmth that was in your body and the covering everything's kind of mixed together and now you're no longer warm under the covers you're cold through and through so about three o'clock in the morning is when your bones start to hurt the most outside and then you have to start doing the, the rollover and you roll over to the other hip until that hip hurts so bad and then you roll over to the other hip until that hip hurts so bad that's the night that's the hardest part so sometime a glass of water it's, it plays a great role in your life either for hungry Either for hygiene, cleanse, water, a glass of water play a lot of role, a great role in your life. That's survivor. Yeah. I've got one client who's who's just a schizophrenic, but I didn't believe that he was a CEO of a company out west. You know, his wife passed away. He sort of it, it just things started snowballing and snowballing, but. He sleeps in like the, the closed drop-off boxes. That's his, that's his thing. He won't do the bushes, he won't do the stairwells or anything. He'll wait until it gets dark and he'll crawl into one of the boxes. It's warm, it's clean, and it's safe. That's the big thing. What's a day in your life like? What do you mean? Just how do you spend your typical day? Alone. Just because I'm on the street doesn't mean I'm not a good person. It's not a homeless person. It's a, it's a human being experiencing homelessness. If we could change people's ways of thinking, I think it would make a world of difference.